What's going on guys? So I am inside of this 2022 Chevy Silverado ZR2 Bison. This thing is a, uh, a premium off-road truck from the folks over at Chevrolet. 6.2 liter gas V8 in it. You know, this is a fun truck to drive and we're gonna take it out to the beach and we're gonna try to experience that on this trip. I got my father here next to me and he's been in uh, several videos before. I don't have him mic'd up so he might have to speak up a little bit if he's gonna comment. But you know, the interior of this truck is so similar to the interior of my GMC in many ways, but in many ways it's very different. Uh, the screen and all of that, very similar. Placement's a little bit different. Air conditioning vents are a little bit different. Um, you spent quite a bit of time in the GMC. What do you think about the interior of this truck so far? I actually think I like this one a little bit better. You know, I'm not going to lie, I think I do also. What, what specifically stands out about this one to you? It just looks like the dash was a little bit better thought out. Like the placement of the air conditioning vents. And yep. uh, the controls are pretty intuitive, so I don't see anything about this one I don't like. Yeah, I think the, the big selling point here is the fact that they put a pocket above the navigation. So you actually have a spot for your glasses. Um, I still don't know why they don't put a pocket in the overhead area for your sunglasses or reading glass or driving glasses because it's definitely, you know, there's enough space up there. They just don't put one up there. Um, that said, though, you know, this is a pretty cool package. It's, a, it's an interesting truck. Uh, off the line acceleration, I'm not going to lie, it's it's... I don't want to say disappointing, but after you've driven in like a Raptor R or you've been in a TRX, it's definitely not as fast feeling. It doesn't pull you in your seat like some of those trucks do. Um, it definitely doesn't feel like a slouch though. It's got the power, um, just the way it applies it to the ground, it feels as if it's a little bit more sluggish off the line than any of those trucks. That said though, those trucks cost like 20, 30 grand more than this truck at least, I mean starting price. This truck has an MSRP of about 85 grand, which puts it about 10 grand, a little bit more than that, above the cost of like a high country. So if you want a premium truck with every conceivable feature, but you want a super off-road version of it with these really cool multi-matic uh, shock absorbers and the, the lift kit and the really aggressive tires with the really cool custom AEV front and rear bumper, then you get a lot of that for, you know, arguably a pretty good price whenever you're talking about extreme off-road trucks. Now, what do you think about the looks of this truck from the exterior compared to like the Denali we have, since that's a really easy comparison to make? I like the looks of the truck from the outside probably better than uh, most other ones that you've had. What uh, I like best about it is more the sound than the, than the appearance. Uh, I think they did a really good job tuning the exhaust. It sounds good, it sounds yep. aggressive. But it's not intrusive, so, you know, you hit it and you definitely can feel the power and you can hear it, but it's not nearly as loud as, I guess, if you'd put like an aftermarket exhaust system on or some of those trucks that are just really, really designed to bring that exhaust sound into the cab. From the outside, though, it sounds really good. It's, it's what you would want a truck to sound like with aftermarket exhaust, I think, for a lot of folks. I agree. Yeah. I agree. A daily driver, something that you don't have to worry about droning you to death, and this does a great job at that. Um, as far as payload package, so that's one thing that my father has. This is actually the first time he's ridden in the truck, but you know, payload package on this truck because because it's a super off-road equipped truck with every conceivable luxury feature minus the sunroof. The, the payload on this truck is actually pretty dang low. Um, it's still got a relatively good tow capacity. You're gonna be in that eight, 9,000 plus pound tow capacity range, but the payload capacity on this truck is just a hair over a thousand pounds. So you don't get the payload that you might expect out of something like this, and that's your sacrifice. What you make up for it is extreme off-road capability. Front and rear locker, so you can lock up every wheel on this thing, and everything will spin at the same time to get you out of a tough spot. And that's really what we're going out to the beach today to kind of check out because I think people know if you live in an area with very, very soft sand, sand can be one of those things that you can get yourself in trouble really quick if you're not prepared to, to understand what it can do. So you're traveling through it, sand can just start kind of eating up the traction you have in your tires, and it can be very difficult to get yourself out of deep sand. Now you see a lot of, a lot of big four-wheel drive trucks that find themselves in a bad position going through sand, 
Um, and part of it is just something my dad taught me when I was, I think, 12 years old, when you first got me behind the seat of the white Bronco we owned, was just don't stop. If you stop, you're asking for problems in sand. Um, any other advice? Well, that's pretty much it. Momentum is the key. And my goal here is to try to reduce that momentum and see if I can still get the truck out. So we're going to see if we can find some nice sandy areas. We haven't had rain come through here in well over a month. And that equates to a beach that is ripe with deep, soft sand. And you're going to see a lot of vehicles out there that you would think, man, why are those vehicles out there? It looks like a two-wheel drive Honda Civic, front-wheel drive Honda Civic. Why is that vehicle out there? Well, lightweight coupled with front-wheel drive typically will get you through some pretty deep sand to a point. Then you're going to get to a point to where you simply don't have the clearance and you're going to be bottoming out and you'll find yourself in a bad situation. If you watch the video I did on the Colorado Trail Boss that we took out there, four-wheel drive, you saw a lot of cars that were kind of getting through the sand, but then you saw several that were stuck in it because really it comes down to the fact that they probably slowed down too much. Maybe they were letting a car cross in front of them and they stopped. So sand is, uh, is an interesting thing. The heavier the vehicle, typically the worse you're going to perform out there. Um, a lot of folks are going to say air down the tires to like 5 or 10 PSI, which is absolutely one way to get more, more traction on the ground and to kind of spread out the mass. We're going to try to find the deepest possible sand we can take this truck into. We've got a little bit of recovery gear just in case. Maybe we might end up recovering somebody else, but we're going to, we're going to see how this truck performs. So definitely uh, hang tight on this one. We're going to be there shortly. So we are now on Padre Island. You could kind of consider this North Padre Island. This is a drivable beach. I've been out here many, many times with vehicles. And you can see all the different variety of vehicles that are out here, even some that are hauling around food trailers. But that's because this area of the beach is extremely compacted. So you can be in just about anything and get through this area without much of an issue. This is, this is essentially like driving on pavement, pretty much. You're not really gonna get stuck here. Where it starts getting deeper, is the further you go down the beach where there's less and less people, less and less traffic, and the city isn't coming out here constantly packing down the dirt. So you'll actually see where the sand gets softer off here to the right as people drive more on the left than a few people like to try to go through here. I'm gonna put the truck in four high. I don't really need to, but we're gonna go ahead and put it on right now just for the sake of understanding uh, the four-wheel drive system. I already shifted to four-wheel drive high. Again, nothing really soft yet. You know, it's it's kind of funny. You, you get a truck like this for its off-road prowess. I made a video when I had a, another off-road truck, and the whole point is that most people will get these trucks and they will never take them to an area that challenges them, never. They basically will use it as an around town, everyday driving vehicle. And you, there's a lot to be said for folks who say, but it's nice to have the capability if I want to. This is some really soft sand, by the way. And yeah, you can see some people have gotten stuck there. But yeah, people will get it saying that, you know, it's great to have it in case you need it. And I always kind of make that claim around towing. Um, but the fact is that most people that get this truck have it and will never need it or will never use it. But it's still nice to have a truck with that capability available. So far, we're going over some soft sand mixed with hard stuff and some ruts, so. Part of the reason why that sand, every time you hit a, a pocket of deep sand, it, it slows the truck down so quickly is because you stop running on top of the sand, then you're pushing the sand yep. in front of the tires. So, so just simple, yep. simple physics. And this is some very soft sand we're in right now. Interesting, can you just kind of idle it down a little bit and without breaking, just, just kind of do a, uh, not a real slow crawl, but just a, a low speed so yeah. your tires aren't, because when you're accelerating hard, you're spinning your tires and you're, you're, you're just plowing them. through it, yeah. See, we're about 1700 RPMs right now, almost 2000 RPMs, going about 10 miles an hour. To me, that's a better judge.
knowledge of how capable the truck is, is if it can do it slowly. How slowly do you think I should drop down to? Don't stop. <laughs> okay. Keep your momentum, but don't stop. I'm moving five miles an hour. And I have not locked the uh, differentials yet on this either. Oh yeah, this is pretty deep. Let's come to a complete stop. Or right, first, let's switch it to too high. Let's turn off traction control. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're stuck. Switching it to four high. Yeah, so that was switching it to two high. We almost immediately got stuck. Just to kind of let you know how, uh, how soft it is. I'm gonna do that again real quick. We're gonna switch it to two high. Keep going at about six, seven miles an hour. Switching to too high, and we're stuck. Not going anywhere. Go to four high. Actually, let's go ahead and go to four low. Put the truck in neutral, four low. And I am going to lock up the rear differential. Now we're locking up all the differentials, both of them. I switch back to drive. And we're moving again. Yeah, now I think I can probably move to four high. Gotta be under three miles an hour. Switching to four high. Okay, now we're switching to four high. And back and drive. And no problem again. Yeah, it got bogged down real quick. And we were in the middle of moving too, so we had some momentum. We were moving forward, and the truck still bogged down almost instantly the minute it went into two-wheel drive. You think that was gonna happen? That didn't surprise me. I expected that. Okay, so we are going to wrap this video up. Uh, yeah, went through some really soft sand. Uh, we bogged the back down. Basically, I did what a lot of folks do out here whenever they want to go fishing or use their bed as a kind of a bed that they can access easier or tailgate as kind of a workbench. Um, it's interesting enough because if I were a two-wheel drive truck, there's absolutely no way I could get out of that. And uh, bogging the back down to the axle pretty much means that you have no more traction under your tires, which is what I did. Um, I put it in four high, was not able to get out in four high, so I moved to four low, locked up the diffs, and uh, yeah, I got myself out like it was nothing. Now, I know that there's going to be a lot of folks with four-wheel drive trucks that do this a lot, but again, from a capabilities perspective, just show you how easily this truck can get out of those situations when, when in the right gear, in the right four-wheel drive mode, just demonstrates another reason why the average person who would probably buy this truck would like it. Overall though, um, it handles handles sand really well. It handles the bumps really well. It's a, it's a very compliant suspension. I'm not gonna say it feels as soft as either a Raptor or a TRX. It doesn't. 
those feel squishy soft. I mean, really, really soft. When you go over certain bumps, it almost feels as if they're not there because of how much the suspension moves. This truck feels like a very, very well-tuned off-road half-ton truck. Like if you took a, a Z71 package or even a ZR2 package and you just bumped it up to that next level and you, you really turned this truck into something that was more capable than the models below it, but not at that Baja level, not at that crazy extreme level to where in some ways you may not want to drive it that way because a, a super soft suspension can feel kind of weird and concerning at times whenever you're in stop and go traffic or you hit big bumps on the highway or interstate. Anyways, all that said, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if we catch anything on the way out, I'll show it. But other than that, that's it. This is a 2023 Chevy Silverado ZR2 Bison Edition with the AEV package. Basically gives you the really cool front bumper, really cool rear bumper, a lot of extra trimming that says AEV as well as the seats that are also embroidered with AEV. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.